Hello, I'm Patrick Taylor, and funnily enough, today I'm going to be talking about this. Now, it's coming up for the first year anniversary of my rep rap, and this is probably, I think, one of the first major prints I did with my rep rap. And for a major print, I think it's pretty good. Obviously, coming up to Halloween, I thought it'd be appropriate to do a video sort of based around that theme. So I'm going to be talking about this Halloween mask, which I did for a party last year. So what's interesting, I think, about this mask is that it is moulded specifically for my face and my face alone. What I did was 3D scan my face. Yes. So there's various uh, pieces of software for 3D scanning which are already available. I think uh, some popular, well, the, probably the most popular one is 123D Catch. I think by Autodesk, but at the time I uh, I hadn't really had much experience with these these kinds of programs, and so I set about in Blender uh, tracking my face using their internal tracking um, system, and this worked pretty well actually. The uh, density of vertices around my face wasn't that high, but I could uh, interpolate around this manually, um, sort of generally mould my face, mould the faces of the mask around the vertices which I had tracked and which were already there. And it worked out fairly well. There is a slight problem with the uh, left hand eye, just here, which I have got slightly wrong and indeed this sort of digs in a little bit and it's quite uncomfortable. So if I were to do this again, I'd uh, make sure, if anything, pieces came out from my face as opposed to digging in to my face. So the the tracking bit was probably the most complicated bit. Um, basically, I put lots of dots all over my face and uh, did a video going round my face like that and then tracked the dots. And this, in Blender, created a 3D set of points. Um, so for the eyes and the mouth, I used fairly simple Boolean operations with a couple of triangles and a jagged smile type thing to punch through the mesh in, in my face. And the same with these lines down here. These are actually slightly indented. Not sure if you can see that, but slight indents there. And I printed this off in five different sections. Um, if I can remember correctly, it's one, two, three four, and then a fifth one at the top, and then glued them together with the standard epoxy resin afterwards. And this sort of helped quite a lot because, well firstly, if I tried to print it in one piece, it's way too big anyway. My uh, RepRap Huxley has a build volume of 140mm uh, squared by 80mm high. Um, that's 140mm squared on X and Y. So it'd be too big anyway, and also it's a really horrible thing to just print straight off. I mean, which way would you print it up? You, you couldn't, really. So, slicing it up provided a nice flat base for me to print with, and also reduced a lot of these overhangs, which um, I think I only had to use support material once, actually, and that was with the mouth down here, which I printed this way up. So, you can see the edges there are slightly jagged from where I've cut it away. So in the interest of speed I printed this with 0.5 millimeter layer height. That's quite thick. The default uh, setting which I, which I think I generally use is 0.3 millimeters. Uh, you can go down quite a lot further but 0.5 millimeters is quite quite a large uh, layer height. Um, that was in the interest of speed. Indeed this um, whole print from sort of my first idea of what I was going to do right through to an actual, the actual wearable thing took, uh, I think it was one week actually, which was, which was pretty good. So after I printed it, obviously uh, spray painted it orange and then just filled in these lines with black to make the pumpkin effect, or tiger effect, if you're living in the jungle. So. I think that's about it for this video. Pumpkin mask.